In this video, we're going to learn Power Pivot Essentials in 12 minutes. Power Pivot is a super powerful data analysis tool where you can combine multiple Excel files into one, create relationships between different data tables, and work with much larger data sets than what Excel can handle. You can even make pivot tables from not just one table, which is Excel's limit, but using multiple tables as well. So if you need to analyze data, Power Pivot could be a game changer for you. Before we get into Power Pivot, let's take a look at the data that we're working with, which you can find over here in Excel. We have three tabs, one, the salary brackets for all of these employee levels, then the transactions. So you can see here that it seems like this company sells cars. And finally, the employees and their names. And you can see that we have some columns in common. For example, the level here is the same as the level in the salary brackets right over here. And the same thing goes with the staff ID over here is the same one as this one that we have right here. We'll keep this in mind as we'll use this later. And you can download this same Excel file in the video description. Let's get started by installing Power Pivot. And to do so, we want to head over to the File tab and all the way down towards Options you'll find the add-ins under this pop-up that just came up. And under inactive applications, you'll find the power pivot over here. So what we want to do is switch to the COM, COM add-ins down here and hit on go. Now we'll be able to select on power pivot. That's the one that we want to add and just hit on OK there. You'll notice that we have it here as a new tab, but in our case, let's go ahead and close out of this one and create a new Excel file, which is where we'll do the analysis. In this new Excel file, we'll go to Power Pivot and click on Manage. This will open up the Power Pivot for Excel. And right now we don't have any data. So let's go ahead and import it over here under Get External Data from other sources. We want to scroll all the way down to the Excel file, which is what we want to import. Hit on Next there. And the file path is wherever you have it located. In my case, I just have it under my desktop. So it's right here for me. Hit on open. Obviously, in your case, it might be somewhere else. And we want to tick on use first row as column headers, as that's how we had it in Excel. Hit on next there. And you'll see that it now shows the three different tabs that we had. And we want to import all three. So we'll tick on this top part and hit on finish. Once this loads up, we can just go up to close and we should be able to now find it over here. As you can see, we have the three different tabs uploaded. In this case, we did it for three different tabs within one Excel file, but you can also do this with multiple Excel files and putting them together. Now that we have the data, let's establish some relationships. And for this, we'll go over to diagram view over to the right side here. And you can see we have the three different tables and we want to essentially link them or connect them, you could say, using some kind of relationship. So in this case, you'll notice that we have staff ID over here and over here as well. So we can just link that by dragging and dropping. Once we do that, you'll notice that it's established a connection, which is a one to many connection, as there's only one staff ID, but that one staff ID might make more than one transaction. So that makes sense. Same thing with the employee level over here. We can go ahead and drag that to the level right here. Once it loads up again, it's one to many. So in level one, there could be more than one employee. Now that we've established these relationships, it's no longer just three separate tables, but rather one larger data model with some relationships. Before we get started analyzing data, it's important that we're all on the same page when it comes to data analysis. And a great way to do that is with HubSpot's free introduction to data analytics report. They're sponsoring this video and kindly providing this 50 page PDF completely for free using the link in the description below. In the download, you can find a comprehensive breakdown of what data analysis is, what types of data analysis there are, and some best practices as well. It's not just a report full of text. It also has some supporting visuals to make sure you understand. This resource is great if you're a beginner or if you've taken a fair share of statistics classes like myself. 
I personally find it most useful to refresh my memory on some of the key statistics terms and techniques. So if you want to check this out, head over to the link in the description below to download this completely free guide and level up your data analytics skills. All right, back to the data set. Let's now turn back to the data view so you can see all of the different things that we can do. So right now we have the sale price and the sale cost. So we could add another column here just by doing equals the sale price minus the sale cost, which would simply be our profit. We can just hit enter there and it's going to calculate. Let's go ahead, double click up there and rename it to profit. Now that's fairly simple. You could have probably done that in Excel as well. But one thing that's fairly unique here is that we can link between the different tables now that we have relationship. So for example, instead of having this over here, which is simply the staff ID, what if we want to know their name? Well, we could use the equals related function. You'll find it right here, hit the tab key there. And so we can link it to, let's suppose their name. So the employee name, which is what we want. I'm going to double click on that close the parenthesis and hit enter. Now, because we've established that staff ID as a relationship between the employee and the transactions tab, you'll notice that it's able to find the names of all of the people. At this point, you might wonder, why don't we just add all of these three tables into one? This way, it makes it a lot simpler. The reason we don't do that is that it's somewhat inefficient. The reason is that our table would become so much larger if we had to have all of this data and all of the salary data in the transactions tab, it would get repeated several times. Every time there's the same name, we would have the same salary breakdown and so forth, which would make it quite big and inefficient. One more thing worth learning are measures and unlike calculations over here, they're not going to make a whole separate column. In this case, we can just use them down over here. We're going to go over a fairly simple one, but just know that they can get a lot more advanced. So down over here with the selected, just going to equals, let's suppose that we want to just sum the profit. So we would use the sum formula. You can see that up over here, hit the tab key, and we want to sum all our profits, which we can find right here. It's the new column that we've made. Double click on that, close up parenthesis and hit enter. So you can see down below that a measure is going to show up. We need to stretch it out there and you can see what that looks like. We can change that name from measure one to something like the total profit and hit enter. Let's make sure to remember this measure that we've made as we'll use it later for the KPIs, which are the key performance indicators. For the time being, let's suppose that we're ready to start analyzing this. So we can just click on pivot table up over here. We're happy for this to be, let's say, in an existing worksheet and hit on OK. So here we have the pivot table and it might look like a normal pivot table. But the key difference here is that we now have three different tables that we can work with. While typically on Excel, we would only have one. Let's suppose that we want to find out how much each employee is bringing in revenue. So for the employee, let's go ahead and take their names. You can find them right there. And we now want to take their uh, revenue as well, which we can get from the transactions tab. So even though we have different tabs, they're actually going to be linking. It's just going to be the sum of the sale price. That's the revenue that we've got. You can see here that Sarah and Mike seem to be performing quite well. We can take this a step further and try to see what level of employee they are. So under salary brackets, we could go ahead and take the employee level and put it under columns. What's interesting here is that while Sarah is still a level one employee, so she's fairly junior. If we check by years of experience in instead of employee level, you'll notice that she only has zero years of experience and yet she's able to bring so much in revenue. Maybe we should consider giving her a promotion as she has good potential. Finally, let's go over a key performance indicator. You might remember up over here that we had the KPIs right next to the measures actually, which we looked at earlier. So we'll click on KPIs, new KPI. And over here, you can see that we have the base field. In our case, we only had one measure. So we're going to have profit there. And we can either have a something relative or an absolute. For example, let's suppose that we want them to have a minimum of say 20,000 in profit. 
hit enter there and you'll see how these scales also change we can move them around if that's what we want let's suppose we go for this type of icon style and hit on ok now let's clean this up a bit more so we can see it a bit better so i'm gonna remove the years of experience and the values so i'm just gonna have the name and the profit as well so let me put the profit under values here you'll notice though that we're not really seeing the kpi that's because we need to go inside of this drop down and you'll find the total profit over here that's the one we want and let's go ahead and tick on the relevant areas so i'm just ticking on all here but we really just want the status so we can get rid of these other ones now we can see that sam is clearly failing so we might need to speak to him and jones is not doing too well either much like regular pivot tables we can also add charts or slicers but this time they're going to be linked between three different tables which makes them a lot more powerful we can do a slicer up over here as you can see we have all the different options same thing goes with a chart to learn how to do all of these in more detail check out this video over here to make an awesome dashboard or take our excel course over here hit that like and that subscribe and let me know in the comments if you want a part 2